Dr. Scott Stevens here bringing you all the hits from the top of the charts. We've looked at a lot of different kinds of charts and it's gotten to the point now where we can take what we already know and combine them into other kinds of charts that are also useful. The one I'm talking about today is the Pareto diagram and it's a way of doing a bar chart for qualitative data and combining it with the idea of an ogive for a cumulative distribution. Let's see how it would work in terms of using information about the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I'm sure, being a business student, that you've heard about the Dow. It's computed from the actual values of 30 different stocks, but each of those stocks is weighted by a different amount. So, for example, 3M makes up 6.3% of the overall value of the, the uh, index, while something like Cisco makes up only about 1%. This is about six times as big. How can we get this idea in a graph? Well, Pareto charts, like I said, start with a bar chart, but we always put things from the most common to the least common uh, in the chart before we get started. So I'll highlight all this, including the headings, and I will say, okay, data, sort. My data has, does have headings, so by I want to sort not by the company, but by the weight, and I want to list them from largest to smallest. Okay, so there they are. I also want a cumulative distribution, a running total, and you know how to do that from the cumulative video. Start with the first value, then every new value is the total so far, plus the new value for that row. If I drag this formula down, it ought to end up with 100%, all the weight accounted for, and indeed it does. Now I'm going to make a graph of all three of these columns. I'll grab them. I'm going to go over here to this insert. Here's the one I want, the last column, the combo chart. The two choices here that look kind of good are those guys, but the one I want is the second one. The first one uses the same axis for both the line and the bars, and as you can see, the sizes of the numbers are quite different, so the bars are hard to see. This one uses two different scales. The orange line is scaled on the right-hand side, the blue bars are scaled on the left-hand side, and this is generally how we'll present a Pareto chart. So I'm choosing that, but I'll clean it up a little bit. I want this scale to stop at 100%, not 120, so I'll right-click it, left-click, I'm sorry, left click it, right click and say format axis, make the top value 1, 100%, and down here when you're telling me the number, I really don't need to see that decimal place, make it 0. Same with this axis, I understand what 5% is, it really isn't adding anything to see those extra zeros, so I'll get rid of them, like that. That's looking pretty good, I want to have a better chart title obviously, but there are still a couple of problems. Um, the biggest one being that I see that not all companies appear on the list down here. I'm not sure what bar goes with what words, so I'd like to change that. Left click, right click, and say format axis. This time I'm going to go to alignment. I'm going to say let's make my text direction go vertical. I still only see every other company, so let's go over here to chart behavior, chart, char chart characteristics, and say labels, and specify that there's a one unit separation between the labels. Now everyone appears. Some things are cut off a little bit, so I might want to make the chart bigger to make it so that all those words could appear. That's looking pretty good. There's one last thing I might care about. If, I'm, if it's not clear what's measured on what, perhaps I'd like to mention that this is the cumulative frequency. Well, you already know how to do this. Click, right click, say format axis. I'm sorry, I want to put a label on it. So click anywhere inside the chart. That will activate this design tab. Go over to add chart element, and here on the axis titles, you can say secondary vertical axis, and you can put something like, for example, cumulative relative frequency. And there it goes. Okay. How do you read this thing? Well, suppose I wanted to know how many of these stocks are needed until you get to the 50% mark, where those stocks by themselves would determine half of the Dow index. Well, here's the 50% total. I'm going across to where I see where the orange line hits that, and it hits it here. That means by the time you get to that company, you've totaled up to 50% of the total uh, contribution to the weights of the stocks. So these stocks here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, the first 9 in the index actually contribute as much to the index's value as the remaining 21. This is the main reason that you'll use a Pareto diagram to separate between the important few from the relatively unimportant numerous. And that's how you read it, that's how you create it. Just remember that the line reads off the right scale, while the bars read off the left scale, and you shouldn't have any trouble figuring out what a Pareto diagram is telling you.